Hi pals, it's me, Artie, and this is my reading vlog video of The Ark, Actual Age, Eve Brown. I'm sorry, I haven't filmed a video in a while. I am tired. I don't know where I am. And I just wanted to say thank you to Hear Our Voices Book Tour Company. Is that it? For giving me the opportunity to read this book because oh my god did I need it. I have been so sad. This was a great read. Um, So enjoy the reading vlog. It's long. For a start, I already feel seen I'm on page 34. <laughs> Eve cannot pick um, like a career path. <laughs> like they're the, literally the opening is about why she journals and doesn't keep a diary. And I have never put that feeling into words before, but like, oh my God, me. <laughs> like it just makes so much sense. And I just feel very seen by this character already and I've literally barely read any of it. I feel so lucky to have had the parent that I have in this instance of like I am also 26 like Eve Brown is 26. I also still live at home with my family like Eve Brown does and even though I don't necessarily live off of like a I can't think what the word was but like I don't live off of my family's like money necessarily they don't like give give me money to live off they do like pay for everything else like to do with living food whatever and like literally the introduction of this all is about how she was doing this job she kind of fell into found she was actually kind of good at it but when it didn't go very well she decided to quit because she also wasn't like that invested anyway such a mood the way her brain works and like in the inner narrative and stuff like that and I just severely relate to certain things that she sort of says in like her thinking pattern. <clears> Hold <throat> oh, me, yeah. Um, I don't know, that's just my literal very first thoughts of the very beginning so I'm gonna read some more now. Oh, we got a love interest who wears glasses. Hell yeah. Me. Oh, sometimes it was easier to keep his thought process to himself because other people had trouble following them or thought they were unnecessarily blunt. Big mood. Oh. Bluntness wasn't ever unnecessary. Me. <laughs> Me. They've just described a thing that I have been aware that I do since I was in my teens sometime. Eve narrowed her eyes until they went from wide innocent puppy dog things to flashing slits of night. Then they returned to normal so fast he wondered if he'd imagined that moment. <laughs> Me! I love them both so much.
Eve has a beetle. <laughs> a blue beetle. That's a car, for anyone who's unaware of what I'm saying. So do I. <laughs> I've been having like a kind of a bad day. Um, I'm having a bad forever. Uh, and I was reading earlier and it was a good time. So I'm now going to give myself some space away from the internet and read some more of Actor Age Eve Brown because I need some <laughs> disability validation right now. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I look so cute. <laughs> reading, just, just reading things. I don't know how to like talk about this. Hello, <laughs> I've been dying of fatigue and I'm trying not to fall asleep and carry on reading. <laughs> I don't know how to even like approach this. So I was not expecting a sex scene at like 55%. I wasn't expecting one full stop. I don't, I, have limited experience of adult literature. There's not often a lot of sex scenes in YA, and if they are, if there are any, they are like most often gently brushed over, or like there's maybe like fumbling around. <laughs> My only real experience with them is through fan fiction, and I think it's really funny <laughs> because. Eve talks about reading fan fiction a lot, um, and specifically sexy scenes in fan fiction. So I think it's really funny. Um, Cause like any sex scenes I have read that have been in like mainstream literature, not a fan. Like ones that go into detail of what, what they are doing, not a fan, especially like cishet shit. <laughs> And then even if I do read fan fiction, I do be there like, these people have no idea how anatomy works. I don't, I don't know what you're doing, but okay. So from a technical standpoint, I felt like it was well written. <laughs> Me trying to not be a, a fucking child as I discuss this moment. I think it was well written. Interesting. It was not, you know, the usual typical cishet shit. It had some flavour, you know? It had some flavour. And like, because we're at like, just over 50% through the book, I was like, no, this can't be it. This can't be it. And it wasn't, so. Don't worry, there is still more tension. Still more very typical bad decisions being made. But ones that are kind of understandable, you know? But besides that, I feel like I am both of these characters. And I think I have already talked about that in the clip. I definitely feel like, in general, I am more of like a always irritated Jacob mood. Just, that is me. With the added spice of the no diagnosis of Eve. <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I think it's really interesting showing the two, the two of them were such different outward traits, but also showing their similarities as they get to know each other. And there was a moment where we thought he was going to say, are you autistic too? <laughs> That's not how it went. I can't remember what happened in that scene, but I really thought he was going to be like, Eve, are you autistic too? You seem kind of autistic. 
yeah i really enjoy sorry my left hand is not my dominant hand and it's just shaking i really enjoy the subtleties of showing their autistic traits um but as well i feel like because i've been looking into this a lot in the last year or so for myself and learning a lot from other autistic people i feel like i can identify the traits a lot more easily than maybe if i picked this book up two years ago even but it's it's in everything they do and that's what i love about it that that it, that's the that's the experience of being neurodivergent it's it affects everything you do it's in everything you live and i just really appreciate the way that it's been incorporated into both points of view how it's same but different um and you can see i mean i can see myself in both of these characters i feel like a lot of people can as well or will be able to i also see friends of mine in these characters too that you know traits i never identified as possibly being autistic traits because i just didn't know anything about autism and i'm really enjoying it so far it's been like relatively fluffy light-hearted i know it's going to be a little bit more angsty now that they've um <laughs> done the do <laughs> and they're you know making a conscious decision to not continue whatever they're doing like i have never personally been interested in typical romance stories like you know the ones that are stereotypical words stereotypically what women read you know like with loads of sex scenes and things like that like those kinds of books generally just have not been of interest to me because they have one kind of portrayal of people even though they seem to have like loads and loads of different themes like historic fiction or whatever and different settings like i swear there's pirate ones and <laughs> like i don't know i've never read i've never read a romance <laughs> so reading this has been one an interesting new experience but also two in some ways has been quite familiar when it comes to like i enjoy tropes i feel like uh tropes were over were overdone by white cis straight non-disabled people so i think it's probably important but it's time for me to dissociate what was i saying hello neurodivergence please work with me oh yeah so i personally have been indulging in literature probably since maybe just before i started university maybe around 2015 that you know maybe does use very obvious traits but i've never read them from a queer point of view or a trans point of view or a disabled point of view or like you know any bi poc point of view or a mixture of these things because honestly reading this like white men are my least favorite characters <laughs> but with this i feel like even though he's very definitely gorgeous and perfect from his physical body's existence he's very clearly flawed and damaged but not in like a toxic way in just like a human way in like a disabled kid growing up in an ableist world kind of way <laughs> big mood <laughs> and same for eve you know they they feel a lot more real to me than a lot of main characters do in any other fiction i read i don't know if i'm making any sense i'm going to just i've had enough now <laughs> help me I know it looks like I have not moved in days. I promise it has been several days reading this book. I have showered, I have changed my clothes. <laughs> I have eaten, I have done some things. I just do most of my reading in my bedroom, in bed, at the moment anyway. I have like a quarter left of this book and I, I don't know man, I'm just, I just want, I just want to know how it ends, you know? You know, I just, I need to know. Hmm. 
This book has just <laughs> severely called me out. Oh my god. <laughs> but like, okay, so Eve and Jacob, same. Oh my god. You know, are officially together now. That my hair. What the fuck? I can't wait to finally have a haircut. I'm deeply distressed. Anyway, they're finally like officially together. Eve like dropped the bomb that she was like, oh yeah, I am autistic too. Yes, you were you noticed you and you had some points. And he was like, oh fuck, so you like you knew already. And she was like, mm, no, not until I met you. You made me realise a bunch of behaviours that I also have and talking to you is different to other people except i feel like talking to you is also like talking to my family family blah blah, blah. and then she fucking goes oh my god then she fucking goes and says i actually think probably a lot of my family are autistic too which is why everyone thinks we're weird Eve Brown called me out. <laughs> I got drunk two days ago and was just saying how I think my whole family is autistic. I mean, I've been thinking it for a while and kind of vaguely saying things about it. But like, my family have always had this thing where we find other people very strange. <laughs> we do not understand why they work the way they work. <laughs> and lots of people find us weird. They just don't say it, you know? <clears throat> Whereas we're like, mm, these people are weird. I don't get it. <laughs> like the way that my family dynamic works is relatively bizarre compared to most people, for the most part in a good way. But oh, I just felt absolutely fucking called out. Like since leaving finishing university a lot of the friends that i've made online like some of my best friends online are autistic people who also helped me figure out hey maybe i'm autistic which I, i'm pretty sure i am reading this book has been really validating in a lot of ways seeing two pretty different autistic people showing a very large variety of traits but also many that overlap some of them show in similar ways, some of them show in different ways. Within this last year, I have been kind of almost like monitoring myself and allowing myself to do these kinds of things more because I feel like I was so deeply buried in a mask, which was placed there by society, but also, you know, was not helped by the fact that I did indeed go to performing arts classes for 12 years of my life. You know, I feel like that's where I learned how to be a human and became maybe next to undetectable in the autism scope of things. Because that, as well as my like intense anxiety about being told off for doing things, I would basically just try to disappear. And within this last year, not having to be anywhere or be in front of anybody or, you know, do just like I don't have to do anything for anyone. And I've just been aware of when my body moves, partially because I edit videos of myself, that I notice that whether I'm talking about something really uncomfortable, I start to stim or I'm talking about something I'm really excited about, I can like start stimming because it it disrupts the sound it's really annoying <laughs> and other traits as well that i've noticed pre-edits of videos that my audience may not ever see because i often cut them out just because my videos can be long <laughs> yeah i've gone off on another tangent I, there was also like a point that i was trying to make of like i feel really validated because part of it is showing a whole range of autistic traits which is very helpful but also one of our main characters, Eve, is undiagnosed, but also thinks, like, also has, like, a very loving family unit, um, even though there's a lot of, like, 
ableism going on. She has like a close-knit family, which I can relate to. Her growing up undiagnosed and this uh, swapping from uh, hobby to hobby. Me. Me who has done every single activity under the sun possible and every single creative outlet ever in the world. And like, just the way they fucking speak. I just, uh, I love them. Although my one piece of like criticism, really right now, I haven't finished yet. So this is just my general criticism overall. Jacob is supposed to be a uh, common, I guess, because he keeps calling Eve posh. But to me, the way he is written sounds very Mark Darcy, Daniel Cleaver, neither of whom, neither of whom are common. They are both rich, pretentious buttholes. So that's the only thing that's kind of fallen apart for me because there's a few times where he's like, oh, you're, you're like really posh, like what the fuck? And it's like, you sound posh as hell. I know like, obviously it also depends on the reader. But I do feel like the way his sentences are constructed without any particular emphasis on accent lends it to being that kind of wouldn't necessarily say rp but like yeah like daniel cleaver and mark darcy because that's there was just a lot of familiarities same oh my god that's another eve thing like not quite getting the right words or forgetting the right words similarity of the sentence structures used by jacob in the book sound sound and look very very similar to both Mark Darcy and Daniel Cleaver, both in the book and in the film, because I read the book recently. Um, so that's my current critique. We'll see when I finish the book, but I like, I just was having a meltdown because what the fuck? How do you know me? How do you know who I am? <laughs> Why am I crying? Pardon me, but how fucking rude. How my tiny little autistic heart. I'm just like an autistic person. I need to take some time to consider my feelings <laughs> before wrapping this video up with some coherent words because I've not been very coherent today. Ow, my fucking ice cold heart. So here I am, somehow in the same t-shirt as I wore most of that video. Um, that wasn't on purpose, I've had a haircut though. I mean, you saw it at the beginning of the video, but <laughs> finally, because my hair was not good in this video at some point, it was really bad. But I just wanted to sort of like do a quick summary of how I'm feeling, how this book made me feel. Um, I've basically been recommending it to everyone. And I mean, if you, follow my channel you will have seen recently I read an old manga that made me feel absolutely horrendous and dysphoric about my entire existence and uh, dread the idea of dating again you know um act your age Eve Brown really came at the right time for me <laughs> still not diagnosed 
that's gonna take me a while but um just seeing a love story between two autistic characters but also their side character like friends and family like love them and not like aren't trying to change them which is exactly what like that other book series I was reading kind of told me that like yeah you can be yourself people will like you but they'll still ultimately want to change who you are <laughs> This book was really just a very positive experience for me. I felt very validated. I even spoke to my therapist about it, actually. Because, <laughs> like, it was just... Yeah, I've said this about 15 times, but it was really just what I needed, and I really highly recommend you reading it. Um, anyone who isn't, like, a fan of sex scenes, like me, I'm not really, like, a, a sex scene person. There is one sex scene in the middle you can probably skip over. <laughs> And then the other sex scene is implied, then like you don't read anything. So for anyone who's not a fan, there you go. There's some info for you, but also it wasn't that bad to be fair. Like definitely one of the better sex scenes I've read. So you could give it a go if you want. But yeah, so that's just how I feel. This was a really good book. It's made me really actually want to go and read the other books in the series by Talia Hibbert. Oh, I got it. I'm really bad with names, so um, yeah, Talia Hibbert, um, I know one of them is about uh, one of the sisters with fibromyalgia, which I also have. I did watch a video by Jessica Nicole Dickerson on YouTube that kind of, she goes into more details of like, it's low-key triggering, so I'm gonna put that off for a little while because <laughs> If you follow me anywhere else, you know I've not been having a good time when it comes to being disabled and chronically ill and being validated in my suffering. So that one I may have to put off. And I think the other one is the other sister who I think is by, and I think it's about grief and mental illness, stuff like that. So I do feel like uh, I enjoyed Talia Hibbert's writing and her characterization i would go and read her previous two books so watch this space baby we'll see we'll see but thanks for watching my video leave a comment down below let me know what you think um and if you will be buying this book when it's out leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel i do a lot of book content but i have got some chronic illness stuff coming sorry my voice just be doing the, the most <laughs> my voice just keeps cracking and getting husky and shit like hello <laughs> what the fuck yeah i have got some more like chronic illness based videos planned to, to come out but also more book content so we'll see um i haven't been talking about gay shit for a while but there we go and i will see you the fuck am I doing? See you next week. Bye.